Welcome back to Preps Today with John Millay, star of the show. As you know, John Millay with the MSHSL. We're going to get into all of the usual kind of topics we talk about here on this show. And we also have a special guest I'm going to let John introduce here in a second. Reminder, we're sponsored by Pizza Barn in Princeton. We're coming to you from the Aquarius Home Services Studio. And the best way to listen to this show or any show at TalkNorth.com, please subscribe to your favorite podcast app. It's free. It's the easiest way to listen, and we do appreciate it. Also, uh, our basketball show, John Krasinski, the host, is taking a group to uh, Spain this year with Define Destinations. Highly recommend that trip. DefineDestinations.com. Look for the Taste of Spain trip. Sign up. You get to go hang out with John and see Spain. Highly recommend it again. All right, John, you introduce our guest, and then we'll get on to our other topics. You got it, Jim. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm happy to say we're talking to Bryce Tezdahl, coach of the Class 4A uh, boys basketball state championship team from Minnetonka. I've known Bryce since he was in high school. Uh, he's a grandson of the late, great Bob McDonald of Chisholm fame, the third generation from his family to coach at the boys state basketball tournament in Minnesota. Bryce, uh, congratulations. It's been, uh, it's close to a week now since your team won that championship at Williams Arena. What's, what's life been like since that night? Well, it's been a little crazy um, via phone and just uh, via person. And, uh, you know, all people come out of the woodworks to congratulate you from my hometown and just through everywhere I've been. But, um, you know, just uh, a lot of energy um, still around the school and the community um, and deservingly so for our uh, for our team and our program. Yeah, you guys did a great job. And I know it was kind of a family reunion Saturday night. Your uncle Paul was there. He's the, he's at the whole tournament. He works with our officials for the high school league. I saw your uncle Mike there out in the hallway too. And I'm sure your mom and dad were there. Probably the, probably a whole bunch of people. What was it a big group of, of relatives and, and how did the family celebrate? You know, just always kind of a, uh, a family reunion of sorts yeah. where, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a time where we can gather whether if people are playing in it or not. And, um, it's, uh, it's just a fun reunion that we get to look forward to every single year. And it just makes it yeah. that much better when, um, obviously somebody's coaching in it. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. For people who, who didn't follow along, uh, Minnetonka defeated Wyzetta 72-61 in the, in the championship game. And that was a massive crowd at Williams Arena. I tweeted maybe, maybe facetiously, maybe the biggest crowd there since Caitlin Clark was in town, but it was really fun, a great atmosphere. And referring to your grandpa again, Bob McDonald, he passed away in 2020. He's the winningest boys basketball coach in, in Minnesota history. He won three state championships in Chisholm, uh, 1973, 75, 91. For people who know the story, uh, all six of Bob's kids coached and three of his sons also coach teams at the, at the boys state basketball tournament. Joel McDonald, 2021 from Hibbing, uh, Mike McDonald, Cambridge Isanti, four times. He won a state title in South Dakota in 1985. Your uncle Tom and Ely took that team to state in 2001 and he won a South Dakota state title in 1990. So from your grandpa on down to you, that's three generations, two states, six state championships. And I think people probably know know your cousins who also are head coaches, Rhett McDonald. He's been the head coach at, at Duluth East. He took them to state three years ago. That's Mike's son. Another of Mike's sons, Kyle, is the head coach of the boys team at Forest Lake. So as I tweeted uh, Saturday night, 51 years after Bob McDonald's first state championship, one of his grandkids has joined him in that club. And this is this is one of the amazing things here, Bryce. Not only did your team lose to Wyzetta twice this year in late conference games, you'd lost Minnetonka had lost 19 in a row to Wyzetta. And under those kind of circumstances in that setting for the state championship, what did you do to prepare your team for that game? Well, you can't change the previous 19, but you can change yeah. the 20th. And um, we kind of had that mindset that we just had to go 1-0 and that day. And uh, yeah. the 19 were the 19, and you, you can't change that result. But we had an yeah. opportunity at our, ha uh, at our hands that, uh, you know, if we could get the 20th and not make it 20 on their end, that people maybe would forget a little bit about the 19 in a row previously. Um, yeah. 
especially the the 20th had a little more weight uh, being a state title game. But um, we knew we didn't have to be perfect, but we'd have to be great. We made a couple of adjustments on the defensive end and offensively. I thought we took care of the ball and worked for good shots. But um, it's just a credit to our guys to really put the pass in the pass and focus on the now. And we uh, we've really talked about the power of us and it really powered us through um, to not only make the state title game, but to change that result and win that game. So yeah. just a, a true testament to uh, our kids work throughout the year and uh, really changing the results when it really mattered. Yeah, it sure did. Tell us about some of those players. You, you had a nice mix of experienced kids and, and younger kids. Just talk about some of your players and, and kind of the roles they played this year. Yeah, you know, we had uh, seven guys that really played a lot of minutes for us, um, all juniors and seniors. We're kind of led by um, four-year varsity starters, Andy Stefanowitz, that's going to North Dakota State, and Jordan Kane. Um, those two have played for me for four years. And the, their first couple of years, we were kind of the bottom of the late conference and middle of the road in 4A. And we were a, a definite work in progress. But you could kind of see light at the end of the tunnel. And we just kept talking about staying in that progress um, through the process. And uh, they continued to buy in. And we added guys like Grayson Uleman got older, Duke Richardson, um, Issa El um, We had a Caden Wells that transferred back. He was a Minnetonka kid originally, and then COVID, his parents wanted him to stay in school instead of online school. So he went to Benilde and then came back um, for his senior year. Really good buddies with Andy and Grayson. Um, <clears throat> but we had um, really just uh, in Malachi Bodie, who's a, who's a junior um, really filled a lot of good minutes and role. We just had guys that um, <clears throat> those group of seven and the, the role players off of the bench was Zach Steingis, Al Voss, and Hamath uh, Vangala, who are all seniors as well. Just they wanted to win. And um, a lot of guys and a lot of teams care about um, their statistics or how much you're scoring or maybe their individual stats. And um, this team really just bought into winning and uh, wanting to play on that last day and have an opportunity um, to play for a state title. And uh, for them to buy in and reap the reward of that buy-in is pretty special. And uh, we had a special group of seniors, and now all these juniors and sophomores and freshmen um, that got to be a part of it as well now um, have seen that process come alive through hard work and uh, just putting the team first instead of themselves. You bet. I think I think people who get lost in, in success stories like this are assistant coaches, and you've got some great assistants. Tell us about those people. Yeah, you know, it really starts um, with uh, our three varsity guys. Of uh, Kyle Kalp has been, been with me at two stops now, East Ridge, and uh, Minnetonka. He's been with me all seven years, and um, he has uh, put in a lot of work. He's a younger guy and um, just shows up to work every single day and wants to get better and will do anything for the team, whether if it's scout or uh, running the 10th NJV while also um, trying to help out as much as he can in varsity. And then uh, Mike Reimer and uh, Dion Richardson have been with me as well. And uh, Dion is Duke's dad and Mike has a younger um, boy that's in seventh grade that's coming up through the program. So they're just really invested guys that um, have put a ton of time into preparing our student athletes, not only during the season, but during the off season, season as well in June and July, when we get those days with the kids, um, they're showing up and they want to put in the work in. And we know that um, the goal is to compete for a state championship every single year and that takes a lot of work not only from the student athletes but our coaches we uh we sacrifice a lot um throughout the uh throughout the season and the off season to put yourselves and uh your program in a position to succeed so um and then our ninth ninth grade coaches uh charlie dorn and sam forrester again they they run their own programs but they're so invested um, in the varsity program as well. So it's just, I can't say enough about those guys. Uh, you know, their dads and their husbands, a lot of them are at home and, um, they're sacrificing time just like I am here. And to, uh, have that, all of that hard work and time pay off, um, is a special feeling. Sure. After the championship game, you talked about your own, your, your senior year of high school when your team from Crosby Ironton was undefeated, and you, you lost the state championship game in, in 2A to New London Spicer. And you said that has motivated you as a coach and made you want to get back to high school coaching. And, and you talked to your team about that experience, right? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, again, yeah. it's, it's, it was more about uh, sharing my perspective um, more than uh, me trying to live through them. Um, again, when you when you lose a game like that, you always want it back and it always sticks with you. But when you have um, a perspective from anybody that's been in their shoes, it kind of uh, maybe motivates them and also provides them perspective that maybe um, others can't provide because they've never been in that situation, especially on the losing side of things. Um, you know, winning usually takes care of a lot of things, but uh, when you lose that, you, you kind of um, see the other side and uh, makes you want it back. So again, I, I just wanted to make sure the kids um, kind of understood my perspective of it um, 16 years prior to when they were in the, when they were in that same situation. <laughs> yeah. And I've talked about this on our podcast before. When I was a senior in high school, school, a very small school in Iowa. We, we were undefeated and, and did not remain undefeated in the state championship game. And that stays with you. And the memories are great. But when we get to state tournaments here in whatever sport, when a game ends, especially a close game down to the wire, I look at that team that, that did not win. And I know in that those emotions, those feelings come right back. You know exactly. You know, I'm 65 years old. I remember what that was like when I was 18 years old, and I always have some empathy for those teams. Uh, but let's talk, let's talk about seeding. Your, your team was seeded third. Why is that? It was number one in 4A. And as, as I think most people know, coaches do electronic seeding. One through five are recognized, and then a blind draw is, is used to complete the bracket with the, with the three non-seeds. This is the way it's been done here for quite a while. It's not perfect. I don't know that there's a perfect system. Um, I think we're we're headed towards seeding one through eight. Volleyball already has been approved to do that next fall. And how do you feel about seeding and and maybe the best way to do it, Bryce? Well, I think you know you um, obviously. I think seeding the the five teams are um, usually cut and dry. Those four and five and yeah. six seeds maybe. Um, there's some room for error, but a lot of, a lot of teams that make the state tournament now play each other, whether if it's in conference or non-conference right. throughout the year. So you look at those head to heads and, um, you know, the random draw, um, I think if you go random draw through one through eight, um, people are still going to be upset of, uh, who yeah. they play maybe the first round. So it's an inexact science and, um, you know, whether if you're, um, eight to the, the one through the eights in the section or the, the states, I, I think you can throw out seeds a lot of times. You look at Egan uh, in the Park Center game and um, nobody give them a shot um, to beat Park Center and they end up winning. Um, it happens every year when you get to the state tournament that um, teams that are unseated or seated lose or win. Um, so would you like to see one through eight? I mean, that would probably uh, maybe relieve a, a couple of question marks, but at the end of the day, you still got to play the game and the best team's going to win. And I think you can throw those numbers in front of the, the team name away a lot of the times when it comes to March basketball. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Let's talk about your family and, and the sport of basketball. Everybody knows this started with your grandpa and your mom's suit. She's a McDonald. That's the connection. She's been a coach. Your dad, Neil, I know I know your dad pretty well. He's a, he's a longtime coach up at Crosby. Just talk about that family legacy. All you guys are teachers, your educators, your coaches. Did you ever think of doing anything else? I don't know if, if I've ever asked that question to you, but that seems like an obvious question. All you guys, three generations of teachers and coaches, was that like just ingrained in you? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I had the decision to do other things if I wanted to, but sure. I never really thought about or wanted to do anything else. I was going to play yeah. basketball as long as I could in college. And, um, you know, obviously I wasn't good enough to turn pro. So um, I d wanted to stay involved in the game um, just because I saw that's what my parents did. Um, that's what my uncles and aunts and grandparents did. And uh, the, the basketball thing is one thing, but the education is another. And you're just around kids every day. It just keeps you young and the stories um, and those relationships that you get to build on a on a day to day basis, not only with your student athletes, but with your students. It just keeps you young and keeps you moving and keeps you uh, motivated to show up the next day. And there's some long days in there, uh, you know, with some wins and losses in the game of basketball sure. or maybe some things that don't go your way education wise. But, um, you know, it's a it's a rewarding career. 
And, um, you know, I wish more and more people um, would see that within the uh, within their college process, uh, just the rewards of the teaching and coaching profession. And um, it's yeah. just when you show up every single day, um, kids are excited to see you and they're excited to learn and excited to improve. And uh, a lot of professions don't provide that setting or atmosphere right. on a daily basis. And yeah. when you get to uh, when you get to a spot like Williams Arena in a state final game, I, I told our kids, I don't know where else you're going to get this environment. Uh, on a daily basis in in other realms of life so uh it just can teach you so much and give you so much and uh i didn't really think of any other um profession i wanted to go to just because i saw how much it gave um to my family on a on a day-to-day basis you bet. and as i said you're a, you're a crosby ironton grad a school with a really rich athletic tradition if my memory's right i you graduated in 2008 is that correct correct Okay, so I was up there. That's when I interviewed you for the first time. And, and your brother, Brock, was he, he two years younger than you? Yep. That sounds right. Yeah, and I was I was doing a, a series of, of stories at the Star Tribune. And there was a lot of issues with funding for athletics and activities. And at the time, Crosby Ironton was considering some really, some really uh, drastic changes. I don't think any of those ever came to fruition. But that's I think that's the first time I talked to you and uh, enjoyed that. But your basketball coach, your head basketball coach in high school was Dave Galovich, Hall of Famer, your dad, longtime assistant coach to Galley. Tell us about the impact those two those two guys had on you. Yeah, you know, uh, just uh, when you when you get to play not only for a program, but for a coach like that, that has invested so much time into you, um, not only when you get to high school, but it all starts when you're in kindergarten and you're showing up for Saturday basketball. Um, <laughs> yeah. when, the, uh, when the head coach of the high school program um, <clears throat> shows up and um, is actually giving you time as, a, as an elementary kid and all the way through, it just makes you want to work that much harder. And I think, you know, sometimes you see people just coach the high school program. And I was fortunate to be in a program and my grandpa and my uncles have ran. Uh, My mom was the same way, ran it the same way with their youth program. And I think that's where it all starts. It doesn't matter how big of a school you are. I mean, we try to do the same thing at Minnetonka and it's huge compared to Crosby or Chisholm or Ely or wherever it may be. Uh, You know, you just... You, you can work with those kids at a young age. And um, now that um, not only do they get to work with you, but your high school student athletes, and they just buy in that much more. The family buys in more. The kids are more energized and invested into what yeah. you got going on. And they just want to show up. So um, I think that's where kind of my grandpa and um, Galovich and my dad have just um, succeeded at being uh, high school mentors and coaches. They, they just start so young and they work with you all the way through. And they're not interested in you. They're invested in you. Uh, they know you're the next. Uh, they're going to eventually be there um, and working with them. So I think that's the big thing that um, people miss or skip. You get so tied into the now of, uh, of your basketball program, which you need to um, obviously do um, to be successful now. But I think you're always planning five to 10 to 15 years ahead because if you don't, um, those yeah. kids are less interested and they might go to other sports or um, they might not even try your sport. So um, it was just cool to see that um, from a first hand as a player and now try to do that um, try to repeat that same process now as a coach at the high school level at the high schools I've been. And, uh, it's a, it's a cool process. It's a rewarding process and it works. Um, n- n- no, no person that in- invests in their youth program is going to regret that. So, um, that's the thing that I remember the most. And that's probably why a, a Mr. Galovich and coach Galovich has seen so much success over his career. Yeah. I, I, I can't even remember how many veteran coaches I've talked to. T- tell me about the, you know, we got this fifth grader who, I, who I'm really excited about or this, the sixth grade, you know, they keep an eye on those things. And, and you're right. You have to do that for long term success. Um, let's go back to your, to your personal, your career here after, uh, high school. You had a great basketball career at, at Bemidji State. And then, you know, your coaching career started at uh, Minnesota Duluth, right? You were an assistant there. Yep. I was there for three years, uh, as an assistant on the men's side. There you go. That's great experience. Then, then you then you came to New Prague. If my correct me if any of this is wrong, head coach at New Prague, then head coach at Eastridge, and now Minnetonka since 2019. If that's correct, that and is you took, correct. You, you took Eastridge to state in 2019. 
and Minnetonka to stay the last year. Again, am I correct? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, I mean, this isn't new to you, the state tournament. What have you learned about about playing at the state tournament now with these previous uh, experiences? Well, it, it's hard to get there and it's hard to win there. Um, yeah, I've never yeah. had, this is the first time that obviously I've won a state championship, but this is also um, the first time that I've had a winning record in the state tournament as well. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's a reason why teams are there. And um, this was the first time that um, we've played our best basketball and probably the most healthiest we've been um, <clears throat> since showing up there the previous two times um, with the team. And, you know, I, I think it's as you kind of look back, I've been doing this for nine years and um, we've had a ton of success, a ton of great student athletes and families and assistant coaches that have helped me along the way. Um, at those three programs. But <clears throat> when you think about when you get to that last week in the season, uh, I think you just got to also find the balance of enjoying it and also trying to win it. Um, and maybe my previous two times that I've been there with uh, with Eastridge and Minnetonka, I tried to win it too much and not enjoy the process um, of that state tournament week and just put too much pressure on it. And this, this week or last week, I should say at the state tournament, I just had a great balance of connecting with our student athletes, really enjoying every step of the process, the bus rides, the shoot arounds, the team meals, and just kind of soaked it all in for once. And, uh, yeah. there was pressure to win. Obviously I thought we were good enough to win it, but, um, I just really tried to soak up every minute while also preparing our guys at the highest level to, uh, to win those basketball games. Well, you did a great job. Um, I'm going to go back to your grandpa. Everything when I'm writing about any of you guys in your family, I start with your grandpa because I knew him well. And you talk about coaches with the little kids. There were a couple times I went to Friday night games in Chisholm and then spent the night up there and then went to your grandpa's Saturday morning kids clinics. And boy, if that wasn't a riot, you know, how many kids in Chisholm spent every Saturday morning <laughs> with Bob McDonald in that, in that fantastic little gym that I have just so many great memories of there. And, and I, I know your grandpa also with all your grandkids, when you're all there, he would haul all your little butts to the gym and you guys would have, have the best time. He told me stories about that. What kind of memories do you have of, of being in that gym with your grandpa? Yeah. Uh, and not every, <laughs> uh, not every grandparent's a celebrity and it felt like you were with a celebrity. <laughs> Um, every time that you were with him, especially, uh, especially in the Chisholm area, uh, you know, it was just, uh, you just tried to soak up every minute, whether if he was talking basketball or the world wars, or he just had so much knowledge, um, on just basketball and non-basketball stuff. And, um, the experiences that he had, um, you know, in his later years, when I, when I went up and visited him, um, uh, you know, we would talk basketball, but we'd also just talk life and just to get all of the, his experiences, um, through his own life, uh, through his own life, which again, starting out wasn't easy. Um, uh, oh, you know, yeah. he, uh, he went through some adversity and challenges in his own life, but, uh, you know, through, through those, his life experiences, uh, really just gave me a ton of perspective, uh, of life's never going to be easy. It's never going to be given to you. And it's the same thing on the basketball courts. And, uh, you know, I, I just really, you miss those conversations, um, nowadays just because, you know, he, you wish he could have saw and been there on Saturday night, um, just cause he'd be so proud of all yeah. the work and time that has put into, um, uh, the program and, uh, and winning. But, um, I think he'd be more proud of just, uh, how a lot of us have, have grown up and, uh, and grown men and, um, in the education profession and the coaching profession. And now of us, a lot of us grandchildren are, um, have our own families. So I think he'd be obviously proud of who we are as coaches and educators, but just, uh, just kind of following his lead as just, uh, just leaders in the community as well. Yeah, for sure. Here, this is an off the wall question. Do you own a beagle? We do. Yep. We of have one, uh, that's the, Griffey, that's five. So that's kind of a, that's, that's kind of a non-negotiable on my mom's side. <laughs> Your dad told me stories about beagles forever. And, and for people who don't know, Bob McDonald wrote this great book later in life. And, and I've got an autographed copy and it's a, it's a special thing for me. And it's not just about him. It's not just about basketball. It's kind of a history of the iron range. It's kind of the history of Minnesota. It's kind of a history of this country. He was a historian uh, it's really great if you can find that book. Uh, it's fantastic. And knowing your grandpa as well as I did and, and knowing how proud he was of his family, 
I tweeted just seconds after your team won the game Saturday night, I tweeted a really brief sentence. It said, Bob McDonald is beaming because that's the feeling I had. How proud is Bob? I know he was watching. I know he was beaming with pride. So congratulations again on what your team accomplished, Bryce. It was really special. And I asked this question to, to a lot of people. I asked people to, to move ahead 10 or 20 years. And, and what, what do you think you'll remember from this experience this season? You know, if you can, if you can spin the crystal ball ahead, what's, what, what do you think will stand out from all of this, uh, everything that you've experienced here? Yeah, I think just uh, just the group that we had. It was the most enjoyable group that I've had from start to finish um, of a season. And um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and awry in a in a basketball season just because it's so long and um, everybody's caught up in the highlights and their own statistics and yeah. what they have going on and uh, individually. And uh, this group of kids and families and community just really rallied around each other in the result of winning. And, uh, you know, I've been only doing this for nine years on the high school side and three for the college. Um, and uh, you don't always get those groups that are just um, that just give everything and sacrifice themselves towards uh, towards that result of winning. And um, not only was winning fun, but just being around this group was really fun, uh, whether if it was a team meal or a, a practice or uh, a shoot around. They, they made it fun to be around on a daily basis. And I think the relationships that they have. Um, amongst each other, um, whether if it was um, a younger kid that was just a part of the team and got to witness it on the bench or um, one of the starters that um, played a lot of minute for us. Everybody was connected and everybody respected the process and each other. And we're going to have these relationships and these memories for a long, long time. And uh, yeah. this is a group where in five to 10 years, uh, in 20 to 30 years that you're just going to want to be around to have dinner when they're in town, um, you know, yeah. go to their weddings and just see all the, uh, see all the landmarks of their lives just because uh, it was uh just a great group of kids um, that yeah. um, provided memories, not only for themselves, but the community and our basketball program um, forever. Yeah, you bet. I was talking to Spencer Tollickson at the tournament 20 years ago when he was at Chaska. They won a state championship, and he was telling me about the reunion they just had and how much fun that was. So in 20 years, you're going to get together with these kids. It's going to be fantastic. So, Jim, have you got any questions for Bryce before we let him go? Honestly, I think you covered everything I could have. And, and you know the, <laughs> you know the scene better than I do. You know Bryce better than I do. I I would not interject. I think you did a great job of the interview. Go. Good. Well, hey Bryce, we're going to let you go. Thanks again for spending some time with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll let you get back to your life and and congratulations again, my friend. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Congratulations again, Bryce. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, thanks, guys. Bryce. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Bye now. See you later. All right, John, we, let's get to, uh, yeah. first of all, thanks for lining up, Bryce. Great yeah. guest, He's great get. I appreciate great guy. it. Yeah, yeah. That, fantastic stuff. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the show here in a second. But first, tell us about what's going on at Pizza Barn. Yeah, we are uh, almost at the end of March here. We've got days, maybe hours. So if you hurry before March is gone, you can still get the Pizza Barn Pizza of the Month up there in downtown Princeton. Uh, it's the classic Reuben pizza made with house-made crust, Thousand Island. Tender corned beef that spends hours in the pizza oven. I like that. They throw on some sauerkraut, some Swiss and mozzarella, a little black pepper. You can get that for dine-in, take and bake, delivery all month long. And there is not much left of March, like I said. And a reminder, the March appetizer of the month is waffle fries with seasoned sour cream. That seasoned sour cream made in-house by Chef Shorty. Uh, and as we get here to April, we're excited. We're going to see what the newest pizza of the month is. It's one of the many great things going on at the Pizza Barn in downtown Princeton. It's a great community-oriented business. They do so many things in Princeton and the area. So way to go, Pizza Barn. Thanks to everybody up there, our friend Jody Stay and the whole crew at the Pizza Barn in Princeton. Yes, thank you, Jody. Again, we're coming to you from the Aquarius Home Services Studios. And let's get on to a special anniversary. <laughs> Yep, yep, excuse me, Jim, I coughed over you there. It's okay. Um, yeah, I, I wrote several. I write something every day from the state tournaments. And, and the final day of the Boys State Basketball Tournament, I posted a John's Journal story. This has been something I've thought about for five years. Back in 2019, the Class A state championship boys basketball team was from Henning. 
a real emotional story. One of their teammates, Jacob Kwan, Kwam had died in a traffic accident. So they dedicated everything they did to Jacob. This team had Jacob's number 33 jersey with them on the bench, on the bus rides at practice. And this last weekend was the fifth anniversary of that uh, emotional time. And I was sitting courtside at, at Williams Arena during the first game, and, and I texted uh, Randy Misigatis. He's the, he's the heading coach then and now. I just asked him, are you at Williams Arena? And he was. And uh, a little later in the day, we just kind of went out around a corner in the corridor at Williams Arena, had a nice chat. And uh, he, he kind of caught me up with everything, you know, how that team, all those guys, even though they're kind of spread a- across the country, they stay close. They were just home in March for a reunion and uh, had a great time. And then I, I, I called Angie Kwam, uh, Jacob's mom, who I, who I talked to five years ago. She's just she's so strong and, and just a great lady. So while the while the arena was quiet between the two sessions, session Saturday, I spent 15 or 20 minutes on the phone with her. And she's just so proud of these kids. She was worried when her son died that he would be forgotten. And that that's not even close to what's happened. Those kids kept Jacob with them all the way through the state championship. They held up his jersey, you know, in the celebration at Target Center. And all those kids are really close to Jacob's mom. They send her cards and flowers on Mother's Day. They visit her. And as she told me, I don't have my own son, but I have everybody else's. I mean, that's powerful. Um, and people who read that, I, I heard back from people who told me they had tears in their eyes reading that. And I, I can tell them I have tears in my eyes writing it. Th- these stories that go beyond winning and losing. And that's what Randy told me. He said, you know, we know what's important with with high school activities and kids. It's not winning. It's not losing. It's these relationships, it's surviving, it's taking care of each other. So if anybody wants to read that uh, at mshsl.org, just scroll down to John's journal and you can find that story about the Henning Hornets. Excellent. Excellent work as always. Uh, Let's move on to spring sports. Yeah, we're here. It's springtime. Uh, It's not right now, at least, you know, like from the Twin Cities north, I think there's snow on the ground. Uh, I was uh, down in southern Minnesota yesterday uh, from the Twin Cities before I got to Faribault, the snow was gone. So in the southern part of the state, it, it's 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 wet, but it's going to be okay. But the blessing is before this latest round of snow, we had the greatest late winter, early spring ever. So all these teams have been outside uh, much earlier than most years. So, but we're in kind of a little lull now. It's it's Easter week. Uh, things are pretty quiet. We're gonna we're gonna ramp back up right away once we get back into some warmer weather. So. Uh, I'm already, I'm looking at schedules for track meets and, and baseball and softball, you name it. It's going to be great. We're going to have a good spring, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. Good deal. Uh, let us thank a band. We should always thank a band. We always should thank a band. This one was kind of neat. This is from the Boys State Basketball Tournament. Um, I think it was the Class 2A semifinals. Uh, it was a session where Lake City was playing the second game. And the game before theirs, neither of the teams was able to bring a band. I think, I think spring break was a factor. So there's a game going on. There's no, there's no bands there from the competing schools, but the band from Lake City was there early. So what did they do? They went to their spots in the arena and they just played like their team was on the court. It was really cool that they didn't have to do that. They could have, they could have just hung out and relaxed, but boy, they, they got a basically a full game rehearsal in before they played. Uh, during their team's game. So so good on the band from Lake City. I love it. That's great stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's wrap up today's show with Most Valuable Teammate. Reminder, uh, we're coming to you from the Aquarius Home Services Studios. We want to thank Jody Stay and Pizza Barn in Princeton again. It's not that far out of the Twin Cities. If you're up there in the Northwest yeah. Corridor, just go visit. You will not regret it. Great food, it. great people, great community institution. And uh, thanks to John for doing all the great work. You can read John's written work at John's Journal at mshsl.org. All right, let's get on to Most Valuable Teammate. Yeah, this week's Most Valuable Teammate. We're proud to honor Matthew Squires. He's a senior at Tri-City United, uh, plays football and basketball. He's the epitome of a true leader and great teammate. Uh, He's a very successful student athlete, a very supportive teammate. Matthew has always been a leader by example who consistently works hard and expects the same from his teammate. He gives 100%, works hard all the time, and represents his school in a very, very positive manner. Congratulations to Matthew Squires 
of Tri-City United on being a most valuable teammate. Great show, John. Thanks for lining up, Bryce. Uh, that was you a bet. blast. Uh, so have a good weekend and uh, enjoy the incoming better weather. You got it. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, John.